What's up YouTube, Sharman Xsoft here coming at you guys with a brand new video and today we're going to be talking about the Friday the 13th Virtual Cabin once again and showing you guys a lot of movie references between the bathroom and the kitchen, giving you guys some shout outs and even talking about those new concept arts for the new counselors. Now there is no new counselors in the cabin as you can see right now, but as soon as they do bring those figures in here I will be sure to go ahead and show them to you. But if you looked on the Kickstarter recently, there was two new counselors announced, and the first one is the Jock. Now, here's his concept art right here, and if you read what his description says, it says, Brandon Bugsy Wilson is the strongest and most athletic of all the counselors, and he has the energy to stick in the fight. With high stamina and strength stats, we have our heavy hitter of the crew says Brandon plays multiple sports and maintains a high GPA as well in a well-rounded group if Bugsy goes down swinging it's time for you to run for your life I'm telling you the jock Brandon Bugsy Wilson right there guys that's your heavy hitter as they said you know he's got high strength high stamina he looks like a freaking beast he's gonna be a lot of fun to play and I definitely want to know who wants to play as him now the next one they had is the rocker chick who they call AJ Mason now, A.J. Mason is actually a reference to Heather Mason from Silent Hills. Ronnie Hobbs had tweeted out. But if you look at her and when the concept art, she kind of also looks kind of like a hybrid mix between the part five and part eight rocker chicks themselves. Now, in her description, it reads she's a tough as nails a rocker who doesn't take shit from anyone. Her high composure stat makes her perfect for maintaining her cool when Jason shows up and starts murdering counselors. She's able to sneak around hiding to survive with a high stealth stat so basically she is kind of in my opinion the way that sounds is a mixture between the bookish girl and the head counselor so she's going to have high stealth and high composure so my personal opinion i think the rocker chick is now my new favorite counselor even though we haven't seen her you know in this here cabin or even had a chance to play her but you know, if those stats work out the way that they're talking, that is freaking awesome, in my opinion. All right. Now, we're going to head back out here to the conservatory for a second because I want to give a huge shout out to Queenie Life. Okay. Now, Queenie Life messaged me a couple of days before I had made the, uh, the other video showing you guys the more Easter eggs. And she actually told me that this car was from Friday the 13th Part 9. And I totally forgot about the tweet. You know, I was looking for this car. I did find it in part nine, but I totally forgot that she messaged me and told me to look at part nine. I actually thought I found it myself, but turns out she truly did message me on Twitter and show me that. So huge shout out to Queenie Life. You were the one who found the car for Friday the 13th part nine. And I apologize for leaving you out of that. That was totally my bad right there. Now the next one here, let's go head on in guys. We're going to go over to the item room real fast. All right. And there is something else that I forgot to show, and that is the baseball bat, okay? Now, the baseball bat was found by JPYATT800 on Twitter. He messaged me, um, you know, before I went ahead into the item room video and telling me about this baseball bat, which I totally forgot to mention at all. He also mentioned the metal pipe, but it didn't really pan out the way it kind of looks, so he definitely does get credit for the baseball bat. Again, I've already told you before, the frying pan and the cook pot, you know, that's part one, and uh, cook pot would probably be part three. There's a lot of cook pots all over the place, though, but I mean, I guess you can kind of call it as like the popcorn pop popper for part three. Now, when we go ahead and we start moving down here, we have some new items that I've shown you before in the complete breakdown of all the Easter eggs video. And uh, we have the new 2x4 and the fire poker. The hatchet was already from part three, as we know. And we have the old shotgun up here. So the fire poker is, I'm going to say, honestly, I'm going to say this is me Friday the 13th part one that was used to go ahead and basically defend herself from uh, Mrs. Voorhees. Now, yes, Jason used the poker in part three to go ahead and uh, kill Vera. But the first time a fire poker was used in Friday 13th part one, and this is also kind of like the counselor's side. So I'm going to say part one to go ahead and fight Mrs. Voorhees. Two by fours can pretty much be almost anywhere, guys. I mean, I know there's one that was used in part one to break a window. 
Jason put one up on the door to lock in on the barn on part three. So it's really hard to say where that one's going to particularly be because it is just a two by four. Now, the gun, on the other hand, though, we do know that this is from Friday the 13th part one. Now, the weapon that she grabs is a rifle in this scene that you're looking at right here. But you can see there's a lot of different firearms up there. And it is very safe to say that there is probably going to be a shotgun that is a single shot with a break action in there somewhere. So I'm pretty sure we're going to say Friday the 13th part one. Because the only other shotgun that we know that was really used per se that is a break action or a, or yeah just a break action in general would be a side by side in uh, part nine and that would have been in the, used in the diner everything else was kind of more along the lines of a pump action so this is a single shot shotgun keep that one in mind guys I think that's about what we're gonna get to use right there in uh, the game here on the counselor side but it will be cool nonetheless and you will find this in Friday the 13th part one now as we go over here the pocket knife is a clear reference to Friday the 13th Part 2. That is a Swiss Army knife, if you could look at that, my friends. And you will clearly see it in this scene right here in Friday the 13th Part 2. Now, as we come over to the Jason's weapons, we do have a wrench that is sitting right here. And this wrench is from Friday the 13th Part 3. Now, the wrench was used in the scene where Jason had knocked out Ali, but he did not kill him. It is very hard to see by the picture, but that is exactly where you will find that wrench right there, my friends. Now, the shovel, I do not recall if it was in the cabinet before, but if it was not, we will go ahead and say the shovel was from Part 3 as well. I've never seen Jason attack somebody with a shovel, but he did get knocked out in the head by Chris Higgins with a shovel. There's also a lot of shovels all around the game, so it would be kind of hard to pinpoint exactly where the shovel would come from. But I can say that Chris Higgins at least used it as a weapon and knocked Jason out with it in Friday the 13th Part 3. So let's go on and move on down here to the clothing blind. Now, the clothing blind at this point, I'm honestly ready to say Friday the 13th Part 3. I know it does not have that same design as you can see right here, but you might even be able to possibly pass it off as the one that we can see right here in Friday the 13th Part 4. Sorry about the way the picture looks. That is the best shot that we honestly can get. You can see it's kind of like a room divider, something along those lines in Friday the 13th Part 4 for Tommy's mom's room. So one of those two is going to have to be what it is because I do not know of another location to find it. I know it doesn't perfectly match with part three because it's not, you know, doesn't have that oriental feel to it, but it is a clothing blind. Nonetheless, and you still can play the reference off for it. All right. Now let's go on and start moving our way to the bathroom, shall we? All righty. All righty. This first one right here, this repressed trauma and you, this is the hardest one, I think, to narrow down. I'm honestly going to say this is from Friday to 13th part seven, uh, kind of like a reference to the doctor and Tina, how he used to always say, like, you know, she's got her repressed feelings about her father, you know, the traumatic stuff that happened with her, her killing him as a child, that kind of thing. But I'm really not 100 percent sure if that's really where it's from. This one's this one's really tricky. I mean, I'm putting it as seven. But I honestly am going to tell you that it's there's a very good chance I could be wrong on this one. The doctor's name is very hard to see down there. It begins with an A. Uh, and I do not recall that to be the doctor for Friday the 13th Part 7 at all. Uh, I honestly, I just went mind blank here what the doctor's name was. But I know he's the game begins with a C. So this could possibly not be it at all. But I still am thinking Part 7, you know, her rep press childhood emotions trigger her you know mental capacity with moving stuff and all that stuff so yeah we're gonna go with that all right now the toilet paper though believe it or not other than the fact that it has my logo on it for my youtube channel you actually can find toilet paper in the movie and i'm going for the whole clear references of it being packaged up and we will go as friday the 13th part three as you can see it kind of packaged up on the shelving back there in its own little plastic bag so we're gonna go with friday the 13th part three for the toilet paper here guys now the sink we are gonna go with friday the 13th part two you can see it does have the rounded section around the sink and a bottom lower cabinet now i went through and actually watched all the movies and believe it or not no sinks 
have bottom lower cabinets except for the one in the very beginning scene here in Friday the 13th part 2 and that just kind of blew my mind was very surprising right there all right now we are going to go over here to this green shelf which you can open the drawer on as you can see now this shelf is found in Friday the 13th part 2 and the tub I'm going to say will be from Friday to 13th part 3. Now, I know there is a tub that is very similar to this in Friday to 13th part 9, Jason goes to hell, but the reason we're going to go with 3 is because of the blood and the towels and all that stuff because in part 3, you know, you had the the couple that were murdered in the shower. Uh, well, at least the one girl was murdered in the shower and it was all bloody mess and everything like that. So that is going to be our tie-in to this shower being for part three. I know that the shower rod does not match what was in part three, but the entire look for the tub itself does. And we can't see the upper ring or shower curtain section for the one in part nine. So, you know, it, it would be safe to say we're looking at a reference to part three right here for this tub, guys. All right. Now let's go ahead and start moving our way into the kitchen. Du, 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 du. All right. So the kitchen here, my friends, I'm going to have to give a huge shout out to Nathan uh, Ali91, I believe it is. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. He actually gave a huge hand in this here because, you know, I was having some issues here recently getting some footage captured and whatnot or pictures taken of these different items because my videos were not working very well. And he kind of offered a hand along with I hate my heroes as well he offered a huge hand West Keltner tweeted out to people you know that I'm kind of stuck here and if you guys want to offer me a hand then shoot me some images on Twitter so I greatly appreciate it and this is one of the items here that he found and this shelving is from Friday the 13th part 5 this whole cabinet as you can see right there so huge shout out to Nathan Ali 91 for that one now, the next thing that we're going to talk about, as we've already talked about the toaster and whatnot being in part one way in the past, is the banana peel. Now, this banana peel, I already knew this one. This banana peel is from Friday to 13th, part four. Yes, the banana peel is an Easter egg in itself, and uh, it is in the very beginning scenes in Friday to 13th, part four, with the girl on the side of the road that gets killed by Jason and kind of crushes the banana in her hands. Now, the Unger Institute of Mental Health this would be a reference to Friday the 13th Part 5. This is Tommy Jarvis's uh, sheet right here from the mental health facility. So his admittance form, something along those lines. So, you know, that is basically what we're looking at right here. You can see the Ugger Institute of Mental Health on the side of the van signifying that's the location he's coming from. So that is how you could tie that into Tommy Jarvis's uh, actual admittance form. The microwave is something that we have not been able to find, tell you the truth, and we do know that that board back there used to be out in the uh, the main section of the cabin, but they moved it, and that would be from Friday the 13th Part 2 as well. Now, this cabinet right here, this one is going to be a shout-out once again to Nathaniel uh, Allen91. Sorry if I'm butchering it again, man, but uh, the cabinet is found, and that is in Friday the 13th Part 1. Now, it's a really hard angle to capture, but I had mentioned on Twitter, and he went ahead and found it for me, that uh, it looks like it is the cabinet that is right beside the stove in Part 1, and he got a, an okay picture of it, and my stuff started working, so I'm showing you his picture, and I'm showing you my picture, but you can only get the side of it, but you can kind of see the slatted uh, bars on it, or should I say wood pieces, and it really looks like it is from Friday the 13th Part 1. That's where we're going to find that cabinet from. All right, now the next one is the sink. The sink can also be found in Friday the 13th Part 1, as you can see right here. And then we move over to probably my favorite thing right here, and that is the calendar here, my friends. Now, this calendar, you know, your initial thought, if you look at it, it's like, oh, it's a cabin and whatnot. If you know the trees and how they're lined up, you would think Evil Dead, which I think as well. And it, I will say, I would say this is definitely going to be an Evil Dead reference as well. It is not the exact same cabin that is in Evil Dead. I can tell you that right now. I've looked through the photos. It's not the same thing, but the tree lining and whatnot kind of makes it that reference to the Evil Dead cabin. And if you look down here, this says, buy a new chainsaw. So that's going to give you more of a reference to Evil Dead as well as... The 4th of March, it's hard to make out, but I am pretty sure that that, my friends, is Ash Wednesday, as in Ashley Williams from Evil Dead. So this here calendar, once again, 
my favorite horror franchise goes into Evil Dead right here in the cabin. Love it right there. All right, so the next one we're going to have here is Friday the 13th Part 1. That is the refrigerator and the coal. We've seen the coal before. I've shown you that one, but the refrigerator itself would be a clear reference to the fridge found in Friday the 13th Part 1 is seen here. Now, on the fridge, though, is a sign for the boxing gym that says train with Julius Jaw Boxing's Gym. Okay, this is a reference to Friday the 13th Part 8, where uh, Jason takes Manhattan and uh, Julius is up on the roof boxing with Jason and Jason ends up knocking his head off. But that is what that is a reference to right there. And the sign above the stove, look out for the locomotive, can be found in Friday the 13th Part 3. As you can see over here, she's taking the clothes off the clothesline. Now, the stove here is the tricky one, believe it or not. The, the best spot that we found this stove is Friday the 13th Part 2. Now, the reason the picture is so distorted, distorted is because that's the only kind of time you can get it. It's a split second when she's running past, but you can see the dials match. The side of the stove matches. The front cover matches. The metal top, metal rails, all of that matches this stove aside from it has one extra burner. Now, there is another stove that does look similar to this, and it would be in Friday the 13th Part 4. But on that stove in Tommy Jarvis's house, there is dials on the front of it instead of on the top section. So, again, I'm going to put this stove as Friday the 13th Part 2 just with one less burner to show. All right, guys, that about wraps up the cabin right there. As always, you guys know that if, you know, I've missed a reference here or there or something, you can feel free to go ahead and tweet me, and I will be sure to check these things out and give you guys a shout out when I do my next cabin video. Because you know what? This cabin is not done. There's no way that this cabin's done. You know, we still have three more Jasons to show. We still have, uh, like, five or six more counselors to show. Look at part six, Jason. He looks like a freaking beast. I'm telling you, people are kind of knocking him, but I'm telling you, he looks so freaking awesome. You have to consider the fact you can see the smudges. This is this is glass in front of him. See that? So you take him out of the glass. You take him out of them lights that are on him right there, and he will look freaking awesome, guys. And I already think he looks awesome, but there's some people out there that are kind of hating on his color schemes, and I think he looks great. But anyway, guys, again, as I said, the cabin still has some work to go. I don't think there's going to be any more rooms, but we might find some more items appearing in the cabin as we also approach into Jason's room right here, which is a reference to Friday the 13th Part 2, or should I say Jason's shack with his mother's head. But you guys know what to do. If you find any references, please feel free to go ahead and let me know. Tweet it out, share it in the comment section, all that good stuff. If I you know, see that your stuff is correct, I will be sure to go ahead and shout you guys out in the next video. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I That's hope it helped you out. Boy. And if it did, please feel free to go ahead and slap that like button down below, and don't forget to subscribe to join the Charminati today. And you guys are more than welcome to go ahead and comment below and follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with all my YouTube videos. I'm Charmin X Often, and as always, thanks for watching, and y'all come back now, you hear?